Got it. All right. And we're live. Welcome to paragliding.com. I'm your host, Robert Michaels. Glad you're here. Uh, give me just a second while I sort out my uh, sound situation here. Just put a uh, pause on that. There we go. Now we're cooking with Crisco. We got Stephen Nowak with us tonight. We're going to have a great time. <laughs> he is actually in the chat. right now yeah. doing some training at the like, field. Uh, we caught him at the perfect time because he's all primed up, ready to teach. <laughs> got the whiteboard in the background. I want to mention just a couple of sponsors real quick. Uh, appreciate the sponsors, by the way. Everybody who's been supporting the show uh, over the years, really appreciate that. That is what keeps the show on the air. So you thank your sponsors, maybe buy stuff from them. Uh, one of those sponsors is Harley Milne. He has a, a paramotoring school called dreamlifterparamotors.com. There's a link in the description if you want to support him or maybe you want to get involved in some uh, record-breaking cross-country type stuff like he did with a paramotor. Go check out his website, dreamlifterparamotors.com. Also want to mention Andrew Fuller's uh, full service wing repair and checkup shop. That's paraglider-inspection.myshopify.com. You can't go wrong with PPG smoke stuff. Uh, PPG smoke started off with just a smoke machine that you added to the paramotor. That's awesome stuff in the air. Then it evolved into lamels and chase cams. And then pretty soon he was making flotation and strobe lights. And now he's even working on an electric paramotor. You never know what you're going to get. PPGsmoke.com is the website. Go check them out. And then I also have to give a quick shout out to paramotorprops.com. If you accidentally broke, blow up a prop, which it happens, I cracked two in one day. Mm, 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 mm. Uh, paramotorprops.com is the place you can get an, a brand new prop. They're reasonably priced too. Probably best deals you're going to find on the internet. Go check out paramotorprops.com. Steven, who do you got with you there? Uh, in the background, I want to know these these uh, new guys. We got Dan and we got Chris. Dan, Chris, two guys. Uh, yeah, Dan's second day with me. Chris has been around for the better part of this year. Kind of a solid P two these days, setting himself up the mountain, staying up for hours at a time. Nice. Chasing the birds. Yeah, good stuff. That's where it's at. In the air. That's where it's at. <laughs> That is awesome. Okay. Well, if you guys don't know Stephen Nowak, uh, Stephen Nowak is one of the probably most well-respected instructors in oh, Southern God. California. I'm telling you, Guy has an incredible way of teaching. And I'm not just saying that because he was my instructor. Incredible understanding of the sport from start to finish. And he's also wild. He's willing to take the risks and go and do the things <laughs> that uh, uh, are uh, – are, are fun and, and wild. So he's not just uh, a guy that uh, tells you uh, the book part of it, but he also does it. <clears throat> he's got some pretty fun videos on YouTube. I didn't put a link in there. I didn't put any links in the description for, for his YouTube channel, but maybe I should, if you guys maybe find something that he's got, he's got some really fun videos. <laughs> oh, I do want to just, um, just start the show off. I wanted to talk. It's funny because my my first question on the top was back to uh, or uh, uh, beyond the basics, beyond the basics. And, nice. Um, I wanted to open up by talking about that. Can you um, talk a little bit to maybe the guy that's wanting to go P3 and P4 um, and just kind of whatever pops off the top of your head? I know we kind of caught you in the middle of your uh, wrap up of your teaching day so i'll take whatever i can get <laughs> man uh you know p3 p4 is supposed to be independent pilot right should be able to handle most situations most sites and most conditions and know what's appropriate for you what's not hopefully um just a more independent pilot i like to see being able to handle the turbulence being able to handle you know good pitch control i want to see even better kiting on the ground I mean, it's not just about the flying. I see people that are really kind of messy on the ground, to put it lightly. But then they're great in the air. And I think you see this a lot in, like, the World Cup videos. How many videos we see the super champions? And it's entertaining. <laughs> I mean, the hotter gliders are harder, hotter to launch. 
and yeah, they do a hundred miles, but some of these launches and landings have a little left to be desired. I don't know. Oh yeah. Especially when you get plucked. Yeah. Getting plucked, especially when it's preventable, right? It's not just panic pulling and yanking. It can move toward the glider, make yourself heavy, all the stuff we should be doing. But I think people get to flying and they think they're past that practice point. And I think we should be even more proficient. Ooh, that's I don't know. Really Remember uh, the ozone performance flying video? Did you ever watch that one? I did not. It was, uh, it's a long time ago, but you should really go back and search it out. I'm sure it's on YouTube, but performance flying by ozone. And he says in the very beginning, a performance pilot isn't bumbling around on launch. <laughs> it's smooth <laughs> and confident. And yet I think we see a lot of that. So yeah, let's be a performance pilot. So would you say that it's a good idea? Because I have, I can't say that I've ever seen somebody on a CCC glider kiting in the park. Oh man, you, you should get I mean? your hands off. Go give it a go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and I have, no, I, I have, I've flown some, but I'm thinking yeah. like, I've never seen guys that are comp pilots practicing ground handling with their wings. And I'm, I'm now I've evolved. I'm, um, uh, Five years in the sport, I've flown, I don't know, maybe a thousand hours now. I'm, I, I'm maybe, maybe not that much. I got a log book, but I stopped logging. I should probably get that back up to date. I, I log with my phone and I, but I used to handwrite it also. Yeah. What, what, uh, what I feel now is I, I love to kite. I, I'll be at Blossom. I probably shouldn't be kiting at Blossom, but I feel like I get the best experience right there. That's where you're going to need to know how to launch. Yeah. That's where you need the good ground handling. So I don't recommend that for a new guy, but I feel like if you're going to be flying mountains all the time, you better know how to launch in the mountains. Yeah, you'd be surprised. I think the only practice a lot of people get is three more blown launches next time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not only yeah. that, but the conditions too. It, right. it helps set a, a, a good foundation for I, this is launchable weather. This is not. You yeah. know, this 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 angle is a good angle. This angle, not so much. You know what I mean? It, yeah. it helps you with a lot of reading terrain, understanding the weather, understanding the environment, because it is different on flat land as it is on a slope or on a, on a mountainside. Uh, John Wayne uh, donated $10 to the Super Chat. Thank you, John. A lot of people will be out here and go, oh, there's not enough wind for kiting. Okay, what are you going to do when you get up there and it's super mellow? You're going to drive down? You're going right, to blow a couple right. of reverses and go, okay, I'll do a forward. Yeah, or yeah. just go for the right tool and the job. Well, I haven't done Ford forever. So, yeah, I think it's good to be good in all those situations. I mean, it sounds weird to say kite in too strong of winds, but there definitely is a point to pushing your envelope a little bit and getting dragged and getting hurt. It's not worth it. But, yeah, you should be able to handle all those kind of not the perfect kiting wind. Right? Everybody could do that. I had well, a great experience in the you, park. It at least lets you know where your limitations are i think that's a very important thing to know that you can handle up to this after this it's a no-go don't even play with it. you know what i mean and that helps it only, you has to be, it only has to be one mile an hour too strong to be 100 percent too freaking strong right one yeah. mile an hour backwards you're going into the power lines going into the trees so right. yeah you need to be respectful of that height and but yeah you should be good in all of that I see these guys P4, P5, they're taking a wrap and having hard landings or, you know, taking five tries to launch and get away with it or save a really ugly one, but not a lot of control. So that's what Why? I like to see. Um, you don't think of kiting as a, an advanced skill, P3, P4, but, you know, turbulent air, you know, airspace, restricted landing areas, uh, good repeatable technique. Like, this is what I'm looking for. I want to see solid. I want to see uh, not get away with it. How are the guys getting through their P4 and P5? Do you think it's just maybe they're grease in the hands of uh, an instructor that wants to look good and thinks that they're just going to sign them I off? Wanna, because I want to throw shade, but yeah, there's a little yeah. bit of everything out there. Uh, I think yeah. some people that do the unlimited, they want to get you out of their hair. I've seen cases where people are kind of a liability and then they go, not my student because they got signed off. They're not my student anymore. I've seen this a mm. lot. And oh, that's people, interesting. You know, people are pain in the butt and they're like, here, let's get this guy out of here. I don't like it, but I see it. At the same time, you know, I offer a day rate if someone wants to come and pick my brain or learn and get a little bit better. Um, that's fine. And then I do unlimited. And that's fine. I say whichever one you're least paranoid about. If you think you're paying by the day and you're like, oh, this guy's stringing me on for another day. Like, I swear that's not true. Or you think, yeah. oh, I already paid everything. He doesn't care. He'll just give me my ratings and pass me on. So you could kind of be paranoid about either one of those. 
just depends yeah. on what you're dealing with. But I was so grateful when Steven, I, I was going through the test. We'd already played around on the field. We ground handled. We did some bunny hill flights. And at the end of the day, we're taking the test and he could smell insufficiency in me. And he's like, you got the right answer with this question, but why? All the time. <laughs> yeah. And I, I felt like I was in school again. I was, I got all sweaty palms. I'm like, oh gosh. And, and, and I knew the answer and I knew why, and I got it, but he was like, okay, I just wanted to make sure that you knew it and why you knew it. It was great. Sometimes it's easy, right? Uh, which of the following, P2, which of the following are hazardous, fly, it could mean possible hazardous flying conditions. Are dark clouds, clouds taller than their bases are wide, a yeah. burga, like yeah. all of the above. And people go, oh, yeah, it's got to be dark clouds. Yeah. It's got to be all of the above. Okay, what's burga? Well, uh, uh, I don't know. But it's all of the above. Okay, yeah, well, let's yeah. talk about it. <laughs> yeah. Let's, let's find out. It's not even raining yeah. here. Why do we care? Let's go over it. So I like to talk about yeah. the right answers and the wrong answers and everything in the middle. On my my next question that I wrote down was, what does it take to be a professional? So I'm going to name off a few things. You can pick whatever one you want, but an, a professional acro pilot or an, a professional XC pilot or an X Alps pilot or a competition pilot. What does that take? Man, you got me. Uh, professional means you're getting paid for it, right? You're making it your profession. You don't have a day job. So I learned in yeah. skateboarding, you didn't have to be the best skateboarder. You could just have like the most wild wrecks in the world and you got a pro board and they call you ragdoll. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jaws. <laughs> you could put together a really good video and you're not great in a competition. You can't put a bunch of tricks together, but you could get those rad tricks, make a video. So these yeah. days, I mean, there's so many angles, right? With social media, you could be getting sponsored and, and you're not that great, but you have a good face. You have a good image. People relate to you, whatever it may be. You have the coolest songs, uh it doesn't i don't know man these days i think professionals so wide ranging and acro you better have your stuff together these kids oh, are crazy yeah. right yeah you have to do everything yeah. twisted you gotta do it to the left gotta do it to the right you gotta everything this is this is high level stuff these days um, it is insane what they're doing my just to word. enter the prelims, right? Just to qualify. You're like, yeah. oh, but I could do tumbles and helicopters. Oh, cool, but you're not yeah. even in. <laughs> Great. 2002. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You've been pro 20 years ago. Yeah, but yep. Not anymore. Yeah. I, I have to argue, you know, Kriegel Maurer is this beast. And I feel like the reason why he's a beast is because he's pro on all levels, like ground handling, it doesn't matter if he's standing on a cliff's edge or if he's on a flat ground, he's going to perform to the max of his abilities every time he's able to pull it out somehow. Last yeah. year, I, I was, I, I, you know, I, I love to see him win. You already know he's going to be a, the guy <laughs> who's but, fighting for a second. Yeah. I was kind of like, I, w I was watching, uh, um, gosh, what's his name in second place for so long. And I thought he was going to get it. He, he was in first place for so long and Kriegel was in second and even third at one point, what's his name. Ah, but anyways, uh, I thought to myself, there was something that that lead guy was lacking and Kriegel had it. He was expert on every level. What are the things that you would say would make you excellent at what are those let's we'll just things that you're looking at in a pilot like if you had to choose and you were like this guy's going to excel because of this man maybe an open mind okay like that's a, really good willing to be wrong like a forever student i don't know yeah. you that's good out, those you, are great answers you hit, a, you hit like a young mechanic and you say hey do you know anything about cars like, i know everything everything about cars what do you want to know i gotta fix it I go, I don't know about this guy. You ask an old mechanic, you're like, hey, you know anything about cars? I go, oh, a thing or two. He doesn't care that you know that he's a super hot shot. He's right. been doing it for 30 years. He knows. He can tell by the sound or whatever. But willing to be wrong, willing to uh, learn, willing to be a student. I don't know. There's uh, accountability that's kind of missing these days. Or people, you can tell they come to you. Oh, but I'm a private pilot and I've been flying, you know, United Airlines or whatever. I'm like, oh boy, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> God's gift to aviation, right? Yeah. Here in front yeah. of us. I got 4,000 <laughs> jumps out of planes. I'm a professional yeah. skydiver. Yeah. 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 These guys, I kind of wonder. Um, when I was learning foiling, the guy says, 
Oh no! No! It wasn't me. What did you do, Gringo? And that's what he said. You know, oh. he's just showing us what he what he, what he said. I hope his I'm phone sure didn't die. Back. That would be horrible. Gosh, oh, he's such a good guest. Yeah, incredible. I get all fired up. It brings me back to my first. It brings me back to my P two. Man, he was covering some good areas there. You know, incredible. Did you hear him rapid fire off those answers? Yeah. If you so, if you're if you're not willing to learn anything else, th- this is, I believe, the problem with uh, having that. Uh, uh, what do they call it? You got that. That it's a men. It's your mentality of I know everything. You ego. you can, yeah 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 absolutely ego. You can drag that bad stuff into your flying career. And you might be good at racing cars. You might be good at, you know, whatever. You you might be good at golf and hockey and football. And you might have been a jock and just uh, maybe you're good at, at the books, whatever. But just because you're good at all those things doesn't make you good at paragliding. And, and then you have um, uh, intermediate syndrome. That's the term I was looking for. Intermediate syndrome is that place where now you feel like you know everything. And it's kind of like, I'm going to pull a toggle and pull a toggle, but there's so much more. I was watching Kriegel Maurer uh, launch from this this really sketchy launch. And the, the reason why he was able to do it, I guarantee you is because he's already been in that situation about a hundred times, you know, yeah, that, was, that was embarrassing. <laughs> I lost you. What happened? End of the day, man. He's low. I didn't think. <laughs> oh no. Are you, you're plugged in now? Yeah, man. We're good. Are you able to uh, oh, rotate? Sideways? Yeah. Oh, look Lyrics. at that. Beautiful. Yep, Yana had your back. She she said he's gonna have to go charge in the car, and she put the <laughs> laughing emoji. I'm happy that it, it did so fast. Sometimes you sit there and wait. But yeah, quick. You know. yeah, you got a good phone. Well, they're taking care of you over there it's at uh, Andy Jackson. <laughs> yep. Just get a look at that background. I mean, no, man, oh, man. this place. If you I guys am, haven't been here lately, look at that thing. Building has just gotten insane. Look at this yeah. thing. Yeah. This. And then we got a swimming hole up there. And Didn't got... you just have a camp out there not too long ago? What was that? Didn't you just have a camp out like a overnight? Yeah. Fly-in? Yeah. We had a big fly in thing. Yeah. Yeah. We have a couple of them a year. Sometimes we like all camping out here. But yeah, man, that looks really cool right now. Look at that. That is beautiful. That'd be awesome. How do you get what? Notified for that. Oh. Ah, uh, they didn't do the greatest job at communicating these things. But yeah, there's like a spring and a fall fly-in. We have a website, crestlinesoaring.org. And there's a Facebook page, Crestline Soaring, something like that, CSS. Nice. I'll connect you. I'll get you connected, Gringo. Yeah, we have so many good launches up here. You know, we got 4,000 feet, 5,200 feet, 700 feet, 1,700 feet. We have a whole bunch of cool. Man, that's a rad place. And so- huge. Huge landing area with no obstructions. Yeah, good community. Yeah, I love it up there, man. It is such an awesome place to train. I I like the fact that you get so many good flying days. Yeah, you can you can try go special, to tennis. Robert, that place has a special place in your stomach, doesn't it? Oh yeah, I love it. Marshall's incredible. <laughs> it's true. Do you know why he's saying that? Steven. No, I'm curious though. Uh, yeah, it's because I did. I went with Max, and we did uh, some. Uh, okay. Some training here, ac- yeah. Acrobatics and uh, no, what? It was at Saboba. Okay, okay. But uh, yeah, I did. Uh, I I fed the fish. <laughs> it was. I was so bad. I'm like, oh, that was an expensive meal. I think. I yeah, <laughs> it was. <laughs> So uh, let's let's talk a little bit about. I wanted to continue that conversation about uh, what you're seeing in pilots that 
are, oh, yeah. uh, are what, what things should, and you mentioned having an open heart, being willing to receive criticism. You, t- you talked about the, the mechanic that doesn't pretend to know everything. Yeah. You know, when I was first uh, learning another activity, the guy says, you know, uh, he, in- I was introduced to him as a guy who's really good at paragliding or something. And this you know, is he's foiling. Really gonna, yeah. He's going to learn right? really well. Yeah. yeah with a, fo- with a foil surfing. Yep. And, uh, and he goes, you know, the people that are really good at whatever they do are the worst students. Like you can oh. be like the best firefighter ever. You're going to suck at doing this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is, but I've kind of seen that too. People come that are the hot ticket at uh, motocross or something. They're very decorated at whatever else that they do. And some of these people, you know, they obviously have a lot of natural aptitude and ability, but there are people who are good listeners. There are people that don't just see constructive criticism as criticism. They see the constructive side of it. And a lot of yes. that, you know, I'm working on my delivery. And I could be right, but if it bums you out and you don't learn anything from it, then we wasted everybody's time. Right. So there's something to that too. But yeah, there's people that really listen and put into practice and and take it another level and they're just humble and and i see that taking people really far i see some people come in here like a grass fire super enthusiastic they might run on the board and they want to make all these changes and we never see them again <laughs> it's like a year oh. or two and they're gone they've right. moved on now they're riding bikes or something so um, uh that's cool you got left and right i get it but <laughs> this is yeah. a, a life sport for sure yeah like a poker you know it takes a minute to learn but a lifetime to master yeah. If you're a forever student, I like to think of first. I never got my P5 because it's master. And I don't want to be like, oh, master paraglider pilot got hurt, made a mistake. Like, no, I'm a right. forever student. There's right. nowhere, there's no really incentive, nothing that oh, it doesn't open any doors to be P5 other than a bunch of ego or something. And try to check that. Um, that's yeah. interesting. Advanced is good. I like advanced master. I think that's a little much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. What? Let, let's explore that a little bit. Do you have guys that come to you asking for P four, P five? Yeah. Yeah. You got the P fours. Yeah. I had and a why? guy ask me for P four, and he was just butt landing. I had to explain the whole lift and drag, increasing the square of the speed, and you know he thought he his flares are really bad, so I need to take another rep. And I'm like, I don't think that's the problem. Like, let's talk oh. about basic, you know, physics here and aviation. And now he has really nice landings. I really cleaned them up, but. He's like, oh, well, what do you want your P4 for? Well, you know, I just want, you know, people want to see that you have that. I'm like, but where are you trying to go? That maybe, yeah, there's a couple places that want to see it, but really, what's the point? Are you teaching or doing tandems? That That's a good requisite, but, but yeah, I don't know what it is. I think people like collecting, you know, uh, oh. hunter gatherers, people like to gather, yeah, farm yeah. Bill, whatever it is, you know, collect, collect, collect. They just, and I seen another guy got his P4 and then he quit, never seen him again, just wanted to get that achievement like a, like a video game achievement, you know, collect all the nuts. So, no kidding. Got his they, P4 and he oh. dipped. Yeah. Never seen him again. Huh? Actually, I saw That's him. Interesting. <laughs> oh yeah. You saw him on the water. I was like, Hey, I know you hundred miles that way. Yeah. Wow. So, uh, I want to just, this is kind of a loaded question. Uh, something that you have taught in the past that is no longer relevant. Uh, don't look up at your glider. Okay. Right. I remember Ogden kind of saying that a long time ago, saying, well, don't fly next to me. I'm looking at my glider. Like, <laughs> we used to like, hey, don't look up. You know where it's at. Yeah, look yeah. where you're going. Feel it. Look at your knees, that kind of stuff. I think that's kind of gotten out of favor a little bit. Interesting. Uh, that's a good question. Uh, what are we teaching? Uh, what are we not teaching? I think beeline stalls have kind of gone out of favor. That's what I was going to use as an example in case you look, okay. looked at me. The... The mechanics of the gliders have changed. We didn't have two liners. Like, what are you pulling? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not just the middle of your your four risers, right? My yeah. macro glider has Ds, but most people on here probably don't even know what a D riser looks like. No, right. Most gliders don't have Ds anymore. So, right. um, I don't know. That's an easy example. I think the math and science hasn't changed much, but our interpretation of it, maybe. I think it's interesting to see Bruce Goldsmith saying, hey, don't pull brakes. People are always fall, flying around with brakes. Oh, that's messing up the reflex of the glider. And other people are like, oh, you should be flying with brakes and releasing the outside brake. So um, there's a lot of conflicting information out there, but I think it's all context. You know, like if you're climbing in a thermal, you don't want to just be hands up all the time. But if you're gliding, you probably want to be on speed bar. Uh, I think people don't use enough speed bar, but that's another thing. But yeah. 
People uh, don't use enough speed bar. Yeah, everybody's just flying around left turn, right turn, and their speed bar's in mint condition two years later. <laughs> like, hey, man, that thing's never been touched. It's in mint condition. I used my speed bar so often on a harness one time that I filed the grommets into razor blades just oh, from no. the back and forth. So oh. my speed bar gets, you know, cut off, and I go put a new line on, and it cuts in the very next flight because oh, my that gosh. grommet has sharpened up so severely. Yeah. Wow. So that's a. That's me. I that's when I knew I needed to step up on my glider. I I realized that I felt like if I wasn't mashing the speed bar, I, I felt like I got to the place where it was just like always, oh man, I'm gonna I'm gonna get to this, I'm gonna be in this thermal. And as soon as I got out of it, like the second I got out of it, like okay, I'm gonna I know where I want to go, <laughs> you know, and then I get to my next place, like thermal, <laughs> and I felt like I was always kind of going slow. And then I realized, you know what, probably need to go from a B to a C and let's people are stepping up to the hotter glider and they're not even using the speed range that they have on their current glider. Yep, exactly. So, yeah, I mean, uh, they're putting tall, you know, little handles on the rear risers. It's like commonplace now that didn't happen when I was starting. Nobody was talking about steering yeah. the rear risers. They're going to like install it onto the glider itself. Yeah. So, what do you think about that? You like that? Yeah. Yeah. The handles? It's awesome. Just relaxing. I mean, I mean, really, full disclosure, I don't fly a lot of race gliders, any race gliders. I have a Mantra 6. It's like two, three miles old, like, yeah, which yeah. I love. But That's what I'm flying not, now. But it's, uh, yeah, I'm flying acro gliders and single surface hike and flies. And, you know, I fly my acro glider with a motor. I don't really dabble too much. Just stick with what I got. Let's uh, let's spin the wheel real quick. And then I have a, a great question about uh, certain gliders. <laughs> come out yeah so no more names in the wheel i know this yep. is a little delayed but by the time you hear it i've already spun so aha that's right <laughs> all right let's do this yeah and you're what are we giving away robert uh we're giving a pair gliding talk.com t-shirt all right yeah you need a, a pair gliding talk t-shirt for sure yeah go ahead and let it rip all right yeah the spin of this wheel is brought to you by calamity kite clinic so if you guys don't know sean who's spinning the wheel right now uh, has a ground handling school. And so for a nominal fee, you can you can set up a training course with him. Uh, you can meet him. He lives on uh, kind of the East Coast, you could say mid East Coast in Ohio. And so Northeast. he's uh, Northeast. Yeah. So he'll be at different fly-ins in that general area. And so when you want to connect with him, uh, you can go calamitykiteclinic.com and uh, sign up with him oh gosh i need a shirt so bad too come on oh. paragliding talk shirt come on oh so close oh, it's gonna be right on the line too he's a nail biter here i know both these guys oh it's gonna be a nail biter playing phil playing ppg field. congratulations, congratulations. Uh, go to the website, paraglidingtalk.com forward slash contact, put your shirt size and your address, and I'll send you out a Paragliding Talk t-shirt. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate you supporting the show. Uh, by the way, if you want to support the show on Patreon and PayPal, you can do that. There's links in the description. Keep the show going for the price of a cup of coffee. You can learn something that might save your life, might save your friends' lives, might be something that just keeps you from breaking your legs or something. It's a great thing. What we're doing, the show, it's, it's fun. It's fun for me. It's personal, but also... Um, it incentivizes me to come here because I could have went flying today and I wanted to, but I came here to do the show because there's money involved. So if you can support the show, please do that. We really appreciate that. And uh, we're really thank thankful for all the guys that uh, are in spo the sponsors of the show uh, over the years, man, that's, that's been uh, such a great blessing. We can give away things. We can do all kinds of, I mean, uh, we've had so much fun because of the people who have supported the show. So Steven, have you flown a mustache or a mullet? Man, I have not, but that's, oh, that's okay. pretty intriguing, huh? So if you guys are watching this, I need some, one of you needs to make it happen. Someone needs to go visit Steven and bring, I'd argue, probably the 22 meter. Bring him a 22. Ripman Rip Rip has Man a 22. Riding. 
Rip, Rip, Rip Man Riding would definitely be the man yeah. to, to go down there and talk to Stephen personally. And, and it, would, it would probably bring both of those fighters with him. He just got another one. That's true. We just voluntold you. Uh, you have to go to Southern California again. I know, Rip Man. And go meet with Stephen. And he, he'll give you some tips, too. It'll be amazing. It'll be a uh, you guys can sh- you know, sh- share some uh, some things that you have. That's the thing that's changed, right? I mean, how crazy is that? Reinventing the wheel, putting a new spin on it. Everybody a little apprehensive. Now we're like blown away, going, "Wow, we got some geniuses out there." Yeah, so think of that. Cool. So think, cool. I mean, full range in your hands. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm surprised. Smooth. I keep hearing um, the same common feedback. It's like, dude, it's wild. It's insane. It's all this. And I had a chance to fly it, but the wind died right. I was at Tory. It it wow. petered off and I would have went to the beach for sure. And I just wasn't feeling how I was feeling. Sounds all right. Yeah. <laughs> wasn't feeling Great like going to the beach. At the end, that sounds worth it. Yeah. Yeah. I said, what? nah. We were on a mission. We went, we went, we wanted to have dinner and all that. But uh yeah, so if somebody can please go visit Steve. Yeah, Rip Man's in the chat. Looks like uh he's got a 26 meter and a 22 mustache, 23 mullet. So he's got everything you need. Um uh, yeah, cool uh, innovation. Wardified said mullet on behind the time. So um can you talk about that glider for just a minute for people that don't really understand um the uh mustache or the mullet i don't even know i know the mustache i don't even know the mullet i've been out of it it's like Um, the same it's like it's not the right topography but yeah you know you go add your speed bar and it's a lot of pressure and you're using your legs it's hard to get super little millimeter resolution right you say oh i've been practicing i could add and do pitch control with my speed bar not just with my brakes like we're traditionally thinking but if that could be all smooth and sexy and integrated and you can dive and flare out and just have it right i would love to give it a try i only know in theory and watching gabe and particle impacts and swooping and everything like it's just so amazing so you know gabe yeah i uh you know a long time ago he came here before he expatted his way out of here uh i don't yeah. know him closely oh, okay. uh, one of my friends turned me on to him and his channel in the very 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 beginning uh, they were good friends but now i don't know him i've seen a couple of good guys come through here before and uh you know not too many stick around <laughs> this is not the most exciting place for most people it's amazing it's rad it's not the uh, the Alps or anything, but super flyable, super consistent, almost always soarable, very rarely sled rides. So, but people come I, and go. It, well, even if it's a sled ride, I think I had a forty-five minute sled ride. Well, extended From, sled. Ride. What did yeah. you start at the moon? <laughs> <laughs> we we launched. Maybe it wasn't that long. I think I've been telling different people definitions that. of sled rides, but yeah, yeah. We we had a good flight. My my very first Marshall flight. It was a long time. Yeah. And before that, it was like four minute flights. I got a lot of students that, uh, you know, their first flight's 45 minutes or an hour and a half. That happens yeah. a lot. Yeah. The right day. Always so, very seldom sledders around here. Not that people don't get them. They're just when 16 other people got two hours, you know, it's it's not the wind, it's you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no excuses. Yep. No excuses. Yeah. Uh, l- let's explore uh, fear. What advice do you have for the fearful? And it can be somebody that maybe wants to fly, but they won't commit because they're afraid of heights. Or maybe it's that person that has flown, got a fear injury. Talk a little bit about dealing with that. I totally get it. Um, a lot of people know my feet stay on the ground. They get in the air. They go, oh, that is aha moment. You have all these preconceived notions of what it means to fly or be high off the ground or whatever. And I say it's not for everybody, but I think it's for more people than they give credit. Uh, Yana was a good example of this. She took pictures of people flying at Torrey Pines many, many years ago. She's on the photography, has the big cameras and lenses. And he's she, incredible. So it's a great photo, right? You see paragliders, it's lots yes. of color, it's ocean, it's beach. And so she took the photos, but never once entertained 
how much does it cost? How hard is it? It was just those people, those extreme athletes. I have nothing to do with it. I'll just take a picture, you know? And now she's flying her butt off. And she's, she's, she's doing it, staying up for hours and hours. And so there was this kind of, I don't know if it was a fear for her, but I get it in baseball when I was a little kid, I was shortstop and I went to go catch a grounder and it bounced off the tip of my glove, the ball and hit me in the eye oh. and like a baseball at really fast. It's pretty hard. It hurts. And oh. it's like big kid punching you. And then forevermore I go to catch a ball and I'm scared that's going to bounce off my glove and hit me in the face again. So you, you flinch, you get out of the way. Oh, and yeah. that fear injury, as you said, I think it's a very real thing. And I think you need to respect your fear. I think it keeps you alive, but also it can slow you down and inhibit and scare you. So there's a, I don't know, the desensitization training, you know, getting over it. If you're that kind of person that wants to get over it, I think there's a lot of reward on the other side. I think holding yourself back from all these fears just leads to a narrower position of the world. And I think there's a lot of experiences out there that you could be having. I mean, we all love flying. We're like, how come everybody's not doing this? Right. And I get it it's not for everybody. But I think if you gave it a fair shake, we're not really falling. We're not. I get there's a guy, one of my good friends flew Tory Pines for four years, got really comfortable with the smooth air. Never, ever, ever got comfortable flying out here. He mm. never did. He's had four years of experience. But any little bump, what? so he would wait till sunset to launch and then get really bummed that he drove two hours for a 10 minute flight. And it's right. like, well, got to launch a little earlier and get the reward. And there is a risk reward ratio where it's not a lot of risk and it's tons of reward. Chasing birds, climbing up high, going far, enjoying the sunset. Like these are amazing experiences that I wish more people would be able to enjoy. But uh, that fear gets you in the way. So um, I don't think staying home and watching Jeopardy is any safer, you end up with heart disease or something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what, what's really safer? Doing nothing, being sedentary? I don't think that's safe either. That's, yeah, that's a good point. He's going to wait until, yeah. I've got a friend that's, he's dealing with, um, he, he's justified. He's, he had a, an incident and uh, he's seen a lot of things. He came from the hang gliding world. And um, he just, it seems like he's, he's got this almost a paranoia, uh, he's, he's paranoid. And I'm, I'm not sure exactly where it came from because there was a, just a huge gap from his injury. It seemed like he, and he didn't really get hurt. It was just a, one of those things where took a, a collapse, the whole wing went away for just a second, right on launch. And then he uh, landed on the ground, whatever. Uh, but um I have to, you know, sometimes I have to try to collect myself from trying, I'll, I'll try to push them and I'll try to, you know, in, invoke my maybe lack of fear. Yeah. And um, so guy's been flying for a lot of years and just now started to have That's, questions. It's a real balance, especially coming from hang gliding. I don't know if you've heard like no frame, no brain. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it collapses like yeah but it's kind of like a pressure relief valve right pressure cookers have a little pressure release valve so it doesn't turn into boston marathon bombing or something right but, um, yeah it's a different mentality that your glider can just wad up on you and i think it's definitely a, a valid fear but i don't know that's a, it's yeah. a tough one you fall off that horse you got to get back on that horse yeah, uh, you don't have to. You could just run away and be scared and do something else, I guess. Yana donated. Really she donated ten dollars to the super chat, and she said, "Baby, step your way to crazy." Yeah, okay. she's still in this position where she sees people who haven't been flying for as long as her, you know, out flying her, if you will, doing longer distances. I'm like, they're not out flying you as far as sees on the launch and the landing right she is smooth and sexy she's consistent she's really good and clean and well put together and she's but she's very conservative she'll drive down when other instructors are launching their students these guys have Ooh. zero experience launching in the middle of the day i don't particularly care for that but um and she'll drive down she's like you know what no she paid her 20 dollars. she's up there she wants to fly more than anybody <laughs> And she'll drive away. So she's very conservative and not pushing yeah. the fear too much. And she's like, maybe there's something wrong with me. What's wrong with me? How come I'm scared? How come these people are so fearless? Like, well, that's okay. Like, 
you've been safe. You're incident free. Let's keep it going here. Yeah, and, yeah. And you, you're watching her. She, she's doing some amazing things. So it's uh, yeah. You got to baby step your way, I think. And you don't have While to do any of good that. Good decisions. She's she's you know, making good decisions for yeah, her. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And live to fly another day, and and love it, and not be scared of it, not quit, not sell everything. Uh, I talk about the risk reward ratio. Like some kids want to be a big wave surfer, right? That's their whole goal. They don't want to be on this longboard. They don't want to be in small waves. Put me in coach. I'm ready to play. And then other people, they have no desire to be a big wave surfer. And the cool part is I would argue they're not having any less fun than anybody else. They're in little tiny waves. They got their dog. They're having the time of their lives. So if you could be happy with sled rides, sunset sledders are your thing and you don't need anything more than that. That's awesome. I would never encourage you to go do what we're doing. Yeah, right? yeah. You don't need to be a middle of the day acro pilot. You don't need to be crazy cross country middle of the day. Gosh. Guy. Um, if that's what so, you want to do, great. But there's a ton of fun for very low risk. You don't have to backflip motorcycles. Most motorcycle riders have never done a backflip. Some little kids, their whole goal is I want to do backflips. And that's cool too. But there's a baby step. You got the foam pit, you got the bicycle, you know, you work your way up. You don't just grab the big bike and go for the hunter footer. So uh, if you want to do that, that's cool. If you're scared, yeah. that's cool too. That is great uh, of thought because I, I, I have to relate that to the speed flying guys that are wanting to barrel roll right out of the gate because they saw something on Instagram and it's like, dial it back a little bit you got to think about I'll what's get you happening. there i'll yeah. get you there but it's <laughs> yeah. not today yeah, let's take it. our time let's do um, it right yeah or a, a guy know, showing up a... on them go, okay, go, go ahead. ahead uh one of the questions on the p2 test is uh i think it may be p3 site i don't know one of the tests it says uh you've evaluated a new site what conditions or variables will you look for when making your first flight I read it that way anyway. And yeah. it says that, yeah, yeah. you know, you're going to look for smooth conditions, early morning, late afternoon. You're going to follow a safe and simple flight plan. You know, you're going to not do anything crazy. You're not going to pull out your hottest glider. I remember all the answers, but something like that. And, um, and nobody gets this question wrong. Everybody knows safe and simple flight plan, do your basics, learn the site, whatever. But I lost a friend who got his brand new speed wing and went for a barrel roll on his very first flight. And, <sighs> it in and it's like wait couldn't we go back a step and learn how it flares and how it rocks and wing overs and then and then go for the barrel roll they went for the very first flight very first barrel roll you know 10 seconds into his first flight and he's no longer with us and it's like man nobody gets that question wrong but not everybody follows the advice they're trying to you know put out there so yeah baby steps man baby steps take it take it easy it's not a rush most of these hang glider pilots are senior citizens you don't, you, don't need, you don't have to do it today. It's not a hurry. So I'm going to share a video I'm gonna, or I'm going to attempt to share a video. Let's see if I can do this. And I want, hopefully you'll be able to see it. Let's see if I can do this. We're going to go share screen. I got to make There's sure. There's been a I lot of crazy it. videos lately, huh? Yeah. Yeah. These ones are pretty, uh, pretty simple. Uh, optimized. I mean, these super low reserve openings. I know it's been a while, but they just keep coming out. Oh my these word! Super reserves all the way into the ground, like fat auto rotation all the way to the ground. Yes. Super low. Terrifying. Uh, let really me see wild. if I can get this here. Okay, so this first one, since we're talking about mini wings, this one caught my attention. Let me see if I can get this to work. I think it's this one. And I'm not going to share the sound. Just optimize. Boom. Okay, you should be able to see. Yeah. You already saw this one. Obviously. Now, can you? Yeah, I just saw this one. Yeah. No, okay. So he's among the living. So that's cool. And then we can kind of analyze this. Uh, tell me your your first thoughts about this. I don't know who this is and what their level is. I don't know. I'm obviously trying to fit a square peg into a round hole here. Uh, cool. If you get away with it, good job. If you don't, I guess you got a pretty cool video to share. Yeah. <laughs> or we have a pretty little funeral, right? Cool. Like, what's the cost benefit analysis? I love, I do really stupid stuff. I've cut away. 
paragliders, you know, three canopies in 10 seconds within 500 feet of the ground. Like I'm not this crazy, but man, yeah, that's uh if you did it, good job. If you did it, it wasn't worth it. You know what this reminds me of? I love it. I think it's cool. You remember back in the day, I used to go to shopping malls. <laughs> oh yeah. And remember there's like that sharper image or that really expensive stuff. Yeah. And, and you would like go or Brookstone or whatever, one of these stores. Yeah. And I would see something that was really cool. And I go, wow, that's cool. I pick it up and look at the price tag. How much is it? And I put it, I go, it ain't that cool. Yeah. yeah it ain't that cool. <laughs> $400 cool. Yeah. As cool as flying is, I don't think this is worth it. Like it's not that cool. Like all I the, can assure you that every day they are reminded of that experience. Uh, just from the sheer fact of when you do something to your tailbone at the very base of it, yeah. you're feeling that through your pelvis, your hips, everything. Every time you take a breath, you move your pinky. You're like, oh, oh. you know. Yeah, you so, didn't realize you use that little muscle. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, that, that, that would be extremely painful. Yeah. Just a cat to the base jump in one of the bridges. You see that where it opens as he's hitting the water and he's oh, known yeah. for doing this. He does it all the time. Like everything is just closer, closer. And people are trying to tell him what to do this, that, and the other. And it's like, Hey, you got to live your life. He'll live his life. You do you boo. But um, is it wrong? Is it right? I don't know. I don't think getting super old and falling apart and losing control of your bladder and everything is really rad. Like, oh, it's a tragedy. Well, he didn't have to lose a bunch of people in his life and didn't have to suffer at the end. So um, if that's what you think is worth it, that's great. I know when I was younger, I used to jump off buildings and skateboard with skateboards and stuff and big handrails. And I thought it was worth it. You know, your knees are going to pay for it later and you're not whatever. You know, all the old people telling you it's not worth it. Yeah. And uh, you couldn't tell me that. I'm the one jumping off buildings. So, uh, and I, like I said, I do stupid stuff with paragliders and, um, I think it's worth it. If somebody can look at Gabe and say, hey, you're pushing it. You're threatening this sport for everybody. We don't like it. But I don't know. I like watching it. <laughs> but yeah, so this, some is of the, these. Oh, we got this is the other video oh, that I, I wanted to share. Yeah. You have yeah, seen this. this. Okay. Started. Okay, great. I'm I'm interested to get your feedback on this one. Now, obviously, tandem um, acro is prohibited in the States. So they're doing this, looks like, in Turkey, possibly. And um, I like the guy's facial expressions. And now he's over the top. Okay. He's doing good with the camera. I felt that right there. There's a certain point in the G's that makes you drop the camera. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then oh. you get all twisted up and around. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Things that you don't realize, you feel like you're so connected. And with those big spreaders, you're not, there is a discrepancy. There is an independence of the pilots themselves. Okay. I think when you're flying tandem, you need to lower your operating parameters. And of course you need to learn how to do that. I don't know if that passenger is a straight up passenger or is he also a pilot that knows what he's getting into, right? Okay. Do they That's have more than one reserve? I know they're over the water. It looks like he might have a reserve on the passenger as well. But, yeah, it's hard to tell. Um, but I, I think you need to lower your operating parameters. I would do this for myself. I'll risk my own life. But what happens is so many, you know, passenger students, if you will, uh, they just go, I trust you. You know what you're doing. Like, you just met me. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. don't know if I'm suicidal or not. What is my risk reward ratio? How, what is my tolerance? There's some people here. I wouldn't want to be their passenger. So, oh. um, that part is a little crazy. If you don't have this totally dialed, maybe shouldn't be doing it. And it was close. He could have checked that surge. It looks really close. But I mean, I've done some stupid stuff, but I did it with people who are flying and they do stupid stuff on their own. They're not just trusting me cold, you know. Do you like see what happened? Light in base jumps. Yeah. He doesn't took check a second. the surge all the way. Well, it well also and then the the wait list where the pilot, the passenger gets twisted around independent of them. Yeah. You, you yeah. notice at the end, look at the guy, he's got his helmet. Like the guy in the back kind of yeah. has like some weird hair. Yeah. They switch places. Yeah. Yeah. He goes over How around in the yeah. world. That's insane. I didn't catch it on the first one. Okay. So obviously there's some, uh, there's a lack of training when it comes to infinite tumble and tandems because 
it's one thing you can practice over and over again. Max, I think, had the world record at one point for yeah. infinite tumble, but doing infinite tumble with a tandem, um, you're not going to be able to just go and rep out 400, you know? Um, yeah, you have to huck and hope at some point, but you should be doing that with someone who's down for that, that knows what they're getting. Yeah, not some random walk up, sign up for a tandem. This is my opinion. I mean, I've yeah. made some this. I've done some free falling in tandems before. And really? I have a macro tandem. I have the 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 Marlin, the Air G Marlin. Okay. Yeah. Like a tandem Emily. It's oh, no kidding. 31 meters, I believe. 31 meters for two overfat humans. <laughs> overfat humans. It's hum it's oh. moving, man. Wow. It's kind of um, but yeah, that's that's a pretty wicked one, man. I see, you well, know, you see a lot of that stuff. At least he doesn't have aluminum carabiners. <laughs> I didn't even notice. Yeah, <laughs> soft a lot of those videos, right? Those videos of beaners are opening up. King. Did you yeah. see that crazy thing with uh Tucker got sending some uh carabiners to homie to break? Did you watch that whole carabiner no. breaking video? Yes, oh, no, that was that's the Ali Express paramotor, the, the beaners that came with it, he had sent to get tested to check to see if they were actually qualified as the Newton meters and they didn't. But yeah, very interesting. Yeah, they saw the Newtons like scratched out and repainted and it just looked really shoddy. And then he went on a deep dive and started breaking super and like it started breaking Woody Valley beaners and like breaking all sorts of care beaners on all sorts of no. different loads. Gates open, closed, and a lot of them didn't live up to the printed expectations. No and, kidding. And it's really interesting because he shows the failure mode of how it actually, like this whole beaner is hanging on one little step, one little overhanging ledge is what's really holding this thing together. Or the pin that's, you know, doing the hinge of the, of the gate itself. That was interesting. I think it was very illuminating. If you haven't checked it out, I, I'm going to check that uh, out. Look yeah, that's awesome. I don't even, I don't have a link to it or anything. I saw it. Yeah, I actually no, I'll find it. it on my little group of people, but really interesting. Makes you wonder. So, I remember I asked uh, Rob McKenzie one time, an uh, old hang gliding pilot since retired. I said, hey, I, you know, I'm doing all these Gs and I'm doing the stupid stuff. And I never really thought about it, but how often should I be replacing my carabiners? And he gave me an answer I'll never forget. He goes, well, if you have stainless steel, I wouldn't really worry about it too much. If you have aluminum, well... If it's your birthday or Christmas or something, I might treat myself to some stainless steel beers. <laughs> oh, <okay>. No kidding. <laughs> Interesting. Because uh, aluminum doesn't have a lot of uh, aero elasticity, right? Mm. Stainless steel can bend back and forth, but aluminum really just starts like micro cracks, fissures right. and whatnot. So after that, a while, they get brittle and you could barely drop it and it breaks. And it's like that weight difference. It's like if you ate a Snickers before you flew, yeah. You made up the difference. Uh, drank a bottle of water. Yeah. Yeah. What yeah. the heck? It's not much. Not I mean, worth I get it. it. Hikers cut their toothbrush in half and drill holes in the remaining half. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've heard that. Oh, man. Grams that up. I, I, I got a just flight. I got like six and a half pound hike and fly. Um, I got to mention a couple sponsors Nebraska PPG, real quick. If you're in Nebraska, if you're interested in getting some top notch training, you can sign up with Josh and his team today. Uh, there's a link in the description so you can get a hold of him. He has an awesome place to train for paramotoring. Uh, go check out his website. Uh, go check out his his Facebook link in the description. Also, the show is brought to you by Lone Star Paramotor. If you're in the Lone Star state of Texas, you can reach out to Ron Turan and his team for world-class training. Also, if you're interested in doing SIV training, uh, maxacro.com is the website. Go to their website. Sign up for some training. They're in Turkey right now. They're doing all kinds of great things, but there's going to be a whole sign-up sheet and there is a place where they have to deny uh, signups because there's too many people and they will say no. So if you can get on the list, you got to fill in those, those slots, maxacro.com. You can, you can sign up for uh, this next season that's coming up quickly. Also want to mention Resurgence PBG. If you want to support our men and women of uniform, uh, you, you can make a tax deductible donation. They are a 501c3. Resurgence PBG has put our veterans uh, in the sky with paramotoring there. What they have is incredible support them. If you can, uh, Todd Scandrit runs resurgence PBG, go check out their website, resurgencepbg.com. Uh, all these links are in the description, by the way. So, um, 
one one comment that was put in Reddit moment said, I just want to say that the Crestline Cruising is one of the best videos ever made. What he said, Crestline Cruising. So I, I feel like I need to see that if I have, I don't think I've seen that. Line Cruising. Taking some little notes here. Does that ring a bell, Stephen? Crestline Cruising, what is that? No, I don't even know, man. I'm okay. curious. All right, I'm, I'm going to really have to look curious. it up. And then like uh, a cook video, I imagine. Maybe. Uh, also, uh, Austin Kaufman made a statement. He said, Stephen, do you do PG to PPG transition training? That's an interesting question. I have before. I've been kind of referring my PPG wannabes to uh, another one of my friends, uh, Mike Masterson. Super nice guy. Super good. Uh, very knowledgeable. Wow. Um, I don't know. It's a lot going out to motoring and stuff. I think if you're really good paragliding, the motor is going to come really, really easy. And a lot of people I get want a motor and I'm like, Hey, let's do the paragliding first. Let's start. And then they're like, Hey, this is actually really cool. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. I'm not That's what happened to me. Them. I love motoring. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. You want a motor, want a motor, want a motor. I get it. But then you realize you just don't know what you don't know. Yeah. And I think it's easy once. Yeah. There's some differences and I have taken people on, but if it's got to be my motor, I'm like, nah, we'll do it with your motor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I haven't had to buy a replacement parts on my motor yet. I won't keep it that way. Yeah, um, yeah, same. Actually, I had to change a fuel line. That's it so far. Awesome. Well, I had a, Steve. Uh, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, I had a, like um, some cooling fins on my cylinder got smashed in the airport coming back from Europe. Oh, crap. That was the only like replacement part I really had. It wasn't a crash. It was PSA or, or the baggage handlers or whatever messed up my motor on the transport. But I took my motor to Slovakia and flew over castles and stuff. That yeah, I did hear about that. That was awesome. Um, we're we're at that one hour mark. Man, that hour went fast. Stephen, thank you so much yeah. for uh, taking the time. I know it's, it's a long day for you already and you made it even longer, but thank you for hanging out with us and uh, really appreciate it. If you want to get some top-notch training, Go check out Steven's website and sign up. Um, he's got just a great head on his shoulders and you're going to have a great time. It is the perfect playing field for learning how to paraglide and get your P2, P3, P4. If you want to learn how to be a tandem, maybe you're interested in getting that uh, next level. Talk to Steven, reach out to him. Neverlandparagliding.com. Is that right? Neverlandparagliding.com. Yeah, yeah. Neverlandparagliding. Yep. Is he new tandems there? I love um, my wife wants to know. You want to yeah, he just said that he takes go tandems ahead. there. Yeah. So Aaron wants to go on the tandem. She won't do it with me, but nice. she'll do it with you. Nice. Come on out. <laughs> we won't swap places <laughs> mid-flight like that guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> one of the guys, one of the guys in the chat, uh, who was it? Travis. He goes, I think that was uh they were doing some trick cartog cartography there, uh, photography. A little, little tricky there. I believe there was because there was a split. Yeah. Not on yeah, the video can. at the very edge where the guy was on top of the other guy yeah. and they started to tip it back. Then it was a flip. Angle. Just because so, you yeah. do a flip doesn't put the guy right. It's, but right. It is funny though. I, I, I did catch a it. Tumble once. I blew, I blew a tumble once, like when I was very beginning a long time ago with a sea glider. I mean, like 15 years ago, no run time. And the glider went all the way out in front of me and I went free falling and I flew. I fell right between the two sets of risers. And yeah, I ended up doing what Max does on purpose. Yeah, but yeah. I did it as I was free falling past my wing. Oh. And I went right between the middle. And if it had been like half or one, I have like one leg behind my head or yeah, whatever. Yeah. But I got out of it and I looked up and I had a symmetrical twist on both sides. My yeah. left and my right were fully twisted the opposite direction. I'm like, what? So I go top land and I flip my harness through and then it was double twisted. And I go, no, I got to go backwards twice. Yeah. And then it was fine. <laughs> So I was like, wow, like, yeah, you never know what's possible. Then Tommy turns it into a trick and does it on purpose. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Puts the bright carabiner, swivel carabiner. Yeah, the swivels on there and everything. It's so yeah. cool where we're going so with all of this. I had no idea that. So, you know, we, we were in an SIV with Max and I, he's, he's at the end of the day, he's like, I'm going to go for a run. And I'm like, can you take my GoPro? He's like, sure. So he puts, takes my helmet. My, my GoPro and sends it and you can't really see everything that's happening. You know, he's doing stuff and then he comes back and he lands and I'm chasing him with the other camera. I'm like, okay, cool. Well, I had no idea what he put on there. I got home 
And I'm, I watched the video and I saw him do that in the video. And I'm like, no way. What the heck? And I didn't know that was possible. Yeah. yeah anyways, it was super fun to watch that and open that envelope for uh, not really knowing cool. American brought something to the table. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. This year. Yeah. I'm stoked about that. Yeah. So pretty My awesome friend just stuff. went to his SIV in Turkey right now. The same guy I was talking about that flew at Torrey Pines and never got comfortable in the thermals. He just went oh. and did full stalls and spins with Max and Turkey. Oh, it's um, perfect. Yeah, so cool. That is awesome. Well, More comfortable. Now, he started motoring, actually. That's what really he got all of his hours with the motor. And uh, now he went out there, go free flying and do some stalls. So, that's awesome. You can learn. You can level your game up, baby steps. Yeah. Well, uh, you'll see there's a link in the description. If you want to join us for the after show, come hang out. Um, I'm going to I'm gonna stay on here for at least a couple more minutes. Uh, Steven, you're free to go. Thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate you taking the time to be with us tonight. Anytime I try not to say no, I'm like, oh, uh, sure, why not? Let's do it. Yeah, yeah. I know it's kind of, we're, we're a bunch of paired dorks, but man, it's fun. And uh, Count on me, man. I'm always yeah. here. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you, Steven. We're going to go to the uh, after show. Come hang out. We'll see you if you if we see you. Have a great night. If I don't see you on the air, I'll see you in there.